I'm absolutely delighted to be here and to participate with you in this Embrace Ambition opportunity um, and uh, really discussion um, on how we can continue to progress. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I was born and raised in Zambia, Southern Africa. Any Zambians in the house? No, no. Africans in the house? That's more like it. Um, one of the poorest countries in the world. Now, I'm not here to give you a whole story of uh, what happened to me, but I, at the time of my birth in 1969, unfortunately I have to tell you to make the story good, um, <laughs> at the time of my birth, blacks in my country were not issued with birth certificates. That law only changed in 1974. Now let me tell you what I've been doing for the last 50 years since I found this out. I subsequently went to Harvard to get a master's in public policy, and then I went to Oxford to get a PhD in economics. I worked at Goldman Sachs and Wall Street for 10 years. I've written four books on macroeconomics, and I now serve on a number of multinational corporate boards. Now, I really here not to boast or brag. I mean, I'm just getting started. I'm only 51. Um, <laughs> I'm here to tell you three things that have been guiding principles for me that I hope I can leave you with um, as you think about your own careers and lives. The first point is that no does not mean never, it just means not now. Now, if you take a step back and hear what I just said about my background, you might think I've had lots of yeses and the doors were flinging open. Um, my life has really occurred over the 70s and 80s thus far, and at that time, the doors were not open for women or for minorities. So I did have to adopt the practice of when the door got slammed in my face, rather than feel like it was the end of the world, I had to take the view that it was a no, not meaning never again, it just meant not now. So as you think about your careers and your lives, when you get those no's, which you are going to get, don't despair. Double down and try and figure out another route, another way, so that you can achieve your goals and success. The second point is that we are not entitled to feedback. Now that's an important thing, because we live in a world where in order to progress and to develop our skills and to become better, we need feedback. And sometimes the feedback, especially on social media now, is kind of vicious. But we do need constructive feedback. And I urge you to, to not only open your arms and your heart to get critical feedback, which is really imperative, but it's really going to be the foundation and the driver for your future success. Why is that important? Because sometimes the feedback is not gonna come from somebody that you might expect it to. Some of the biggest champions and supporters of my career over the last 50 years have been people who don't look like me, who are not from my country or from my continent. People who are men, not women. People who are white, not black. And if you don't open your minds and your hearts and think to yourselves, hmm, actually, feedback is really important, even if I disagree, then you aren't going to succeed because people will be scared to give you feedback. In another way, when I get critical feedback, even if I disagree with it, and even if I don't even follow it, I still send flowers and boxes of chocolates and say thank you for taking the chance to give me that feedback. And as women and as, as, as minorities, we have to be particularly sensitive that we're in a world today where people might be scared or reluctant to give us feedback, but we have to remind ourselves that we desperately need that important uh, information. The last thing I want to say, which is the third point that's been really defining in terms of my own success, is that when that fateful day occurs, the knock on the door to say, here is an opportunity, make sure you are ready. Don't spend your time and energy getting so angry that you are focused on what I would call the short term of, 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 the, of the offense. Think about how you're going to develop your skills. Continuous learning is my guiding compass and principle. Am I learning enough? Do I understand the counter arguments? Even if I disagree, why is somebody else who seems smart and, uh, and accomplished taking a different perspective than I am? I think we live in a world today where we're very dismissive and we get very angry when we don't get something or we think it might be discrimination of some sort and it may very well be. But don't forget to arm yourselves with the skill set and the experiences so that you force those damn racists um, and, and damn misogynists to have to think hard about the reasons why they shouldn't give you that opportunity. 
Sometimes I see resumes and applications for jobs and for school, um, for school places from people when I think to myself, this person would be great if they just focused and doubled down on developing their skill set rather than getting all upset and angry. So I leave you with those three points and I wish you so much success and joy in your lives. It is a great life. You're living in here. You're in 2020. Enjoy it. And thank you so much for listening to me.